right. So last video, we talked about a feature of the Fab Filter Pro Q. And today I want to talk about another one really quick. So last time we talked about the zero latency natural phase versus linear phase. So I'll put a link to that in the description if you're curious about that. It's interesting to dig into. It's worth digging into. But today I wanted to talk about something that's a bit more of a shorty topic. It's pretty quick and easy to explain, but it's something that I have started using a lot more. So previously, I would just use the Pro-Q as a standard EQ. And lately I've been using it a bit more as a dynamic EQ as well. So if you didn't know, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna duplicate this plugin. So I'm gonna hold Option or Alt if you're on Windows. And I'm just gonna click and drag and make a second version of it. So now I can mess with this and I'll just get rid of it when I'm done with this video. But basically, if you didn't know, we have our different uh, frequency bands in the CQ, right? And you can click and drag and move them around. You can solo them and hear just that band. You can have a lot of fun, you know, changing things, messing with the Q value. It's just like a standard EQ, right? But there's one thing you can do that I found very helpful. And that is if you right click on the band here, you can switch over and make it dynamic. Invert gain is also pretty useful if you want to flip it really quickly. That's good if you're doing something similar to notch filtering. I think I have another video on that. So I'll put that a link to that in the description or a card up on the screen. But if you want, you can make it dynamic. And so basically what that does is now it's a dynamic EQ uh, band just for that one band. So you can then set the threshold because right dynamic EQ, it's very similar to a compressor, but it's just targeting one frequency range. So you can set that. Um, the Q value is for both the regular uh, EQ band and for the actual dynamic aspect of it. But you can set your Q value and make it wider or skinnier. If you want to target something very specific, for example, like in vocals, a lot of times there's something that's a little harsh that I like to target with this uh, technique. Target, did I say that properly? Anyway, um, you can also adjust the threshold here with this knob. So see how it's adjusting the threshold. So you can either click and drag it here or you can click and drag it right here. Um, you can turn it on and off here. So that's for the actual dynamic aspect of it, right? If you wanna turn off the whole band, you use this button here. But other than that, it's very similar to, you know, any other band in your EQ. You just now made it dynamic. So you can set a threshold and you can, for example, if something is okay some of the time, but sometimes it gets to be too harsh, you could use this to target that frequency range. So I'll kind of show you, I'm just gonna hit play. This song is, uh, Clance and Imes track that is coming out soon. So by the time this video goes out, it should be out already. It comes out on the 29th of April. So if you want to search Clance and Imes on um, Spotify or wherever you listen to music, you can find this track now. Um, I will link to it in the description as well. It's my shameless self-promotion. But um, here, I'll hit play and you can kind of see this. This is on the vocals. So you'll see it affecting the vocals. So like one way I might do this is I might bring this up and find whatever the harshness is that's bothering me. And I wouldn't go and look for something unless it's bothering me. But then once I find that frequency that's bugging me, I might set the cue to be fairly thin to just target that one frequency, bring the gain down a little bit. But you know, you just want it when it's popping through and being too harsh. A lot of times that happens with vocals, especially when they're um, pushing their voice a little bit more, the frequency balance will change, right? That's why a scream sounds like a scream, even if you play it at a really low volume. Um, and then I would bring this down and mess with it from there. So um, maybe I can do that. I don't think there's anything that's really bugging me in this, but uh, let me hear. So I don't know if anything's really standing out to me as really bothering me, which might be good, right? Because I already posted this to DistroKid. But um, let's say this frequency range is bothering me. And then I'll never go 
So now I could either bring the gain down or I could invert the gain. So let's say we want it. So I don't think I really like what I did there, but it gives you the idea, right? The concept behind it. And you can see it bouncing when the threshold is met. You can see it actually like ducking that, that part of the signal. So um, that's basically it. You can also use this, for example, if you're trying to clean up muddiness in a mix. So that's another common use for it, right? Um, or I would assume it's a common use for it. It's something that I've used it for. Uh, but if you're trying to clean up muddiness, you know, like maybe around that like, 250, 300 to like 500, 600 range. Um, what you can do is set it just so when it gets past a certain loudness threshold, then it ducks it so that you still have like a good healthy amount of those like those mid frequencies, right? But if it gets too loud, then sometimes it can become muddy. So that can help you kind of tame that a little bit. Um, and I don't know if that's the best way to word it, but hopefully that makes sense. Let me know. Let me know in the comments below if that made sense. And other than that, that's all I wanted to show you today is, is this, uh, you know, make it make dynamic option in the FabFilter Pro Q because I slept on it for a little too long. Um, I was pulling up, you know, a second plugin if I wanted to do something like this. And now I just kind of do it all in, in FabFilter. So it's another one for FabFilter. I really like their plugins, but I think that's it. So check out the links in my description, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. And I have some additional content for my Patreon patrons. The big thing I've been focusing on lately, though, is the Discord server. We're all hanging out on there and we're just nerding out about audio and sharing stuff and sharing articles, sharing our work, you know, whatever pops up. It's been a lot of fun. So check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. So let's see. Maybe I'll look at my NAM notes here and see if anything interesting pops out. Um, I did... I did find it was interesting. A few people mentioned this idea that like A&R is dead or A&R is no longer a thing. And I know that's not completely accurate, but I think there is some argument for that depending on like what part of the market you're in. And uh, the argument that, you know, a lot of times it's just they're just called a producer now if they're doing the, the tasks that an A&R person used to do. So I thought that was really interesting. I'd love to hear what you all think about that in the comments below. Um I know some of that's semantics. It's just, you know, what do we call the role, right? There's uh, That's all been kind of not as clear cut as people pretend it is sometimes. So um, I don't know. So, yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting how these definitions of jobs shift over time and shift based on who you're talking to and what part of the market you're in. And, um, you know, how A&R maybe used to be less technical than it is nowadays. And, you know, if it is called A&R at all, sometimes it's called produ production or it's, you know, they're called a producer and I just thought that was interesting. So I guess that's what I'm sharing right now. That's definitely a blooper, though. The way I worded that, that was um, that was a little rough. But I hope it made sense. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, bye.